Well, here we are again with the 1983 ATC 250R. I'm going to try to do a few things to get the top end uh, assembled. I'm going to try to do what a commenter said prior to this, as in to like, record myself, fast forward it, and uh, put some music overlay over the mat while I work on the actual thing. But uh, if you're unfamiliar with this trike, it's like I said, an 83 ATC 250R. It has a custom craft 300 top end kit on it. And I actually just got a new Mossberg intake on it. Because if anyone does know anything about this, it actually has an 87, 80, 85, 86 ATC 250R intake on it because I'm running a 27, 28. I don't remember. I'm running a larger carburetor. I don't remember off the top of my head at this moment. And I need the larger boot in order to work with the carb and then that's why I've made my own air filter system here and it gets way too close to the exhaust for my comfort so instead of it being an angled boot that'll bring it towards the exhaust a little this straight boot should get me to kick out a little bit more and hopefully make it run a little bit better and as we can see I've got everything right here I thought about repainting it and I just decided not to but fresh bore fresh piston I guess, uh, let's get going. So even though for you guys you can't tell, it's probably been two weeks since I shot that first part. I've had two other tractors to work on. Uh, Hog Barn's been going wild. I worked on some inside projects in the house. Um, I finished getting that guy painted. Still haven't had time to fully clean my garage like I need to, but uh, that's gonna happen once this guy's done, I have one other project to for sure get in before it gets too cold out. Tonight's, today is a beautiful 60 some degree day with a lot of rain all day. So it's been a fantastic day. And uh, first time wearing a sweatshirt in the garage this year, basically, excluding the early winter months of January. But uh, the time's about upon us again. So first I'm going to take this piston out. As a lot of you guys probably know, there's one little keeper ring in here. Now what I always do is I always bunch shove a bunch of rags down in here. That way, if this ring wants to shoot out and try to get over there, it's most likely not going to end up in my lower end. Now what I like to do is I like to take the uh, pick that I have that's a small hook on the end. Now I can grab it and uh, get the guy right out. Luckily it shot and hit me in the knuckle. So that one was an easy enough one to find. I know sometimes these guys can be a son of a buck to get out of that piston. So, and it has to come this way. I, I sometimes amaze myself with my own stupidity. But, <laughs> that should at least mean that the other keeper is still in there. And that's part of the reason why it uh, did not want to come out. I'm probably pushing on the other ring. Well, it's been moved a little, but, uh, yeah, basically I'm going to continue doing this with any two hands, so, probably want time lapse, probably just get to straight on to the piston removed, new one on, nothing too crazy, you pull a pin out, make sure the bearings are good, put the pin in with the new one, put your keepers in, done. Well, as you can tell, it is raining, um, Got the new piston on, so I'm going to, I already have the studs in, but I'm going to assemble the rest of my cylinder, obviously, before I put it on there. That way I'm not trying to squeeze my hands in the tiny places, because it doesn't work too well. My hands are too big, basically. So, uh, yeah, I might put a time lapse on this. You basically watch it put the intake, the exhaust flange on. And uh, nothing too crazy, but figure out. A little bit more extra content wouldn't hurt, and I saw many gaskets set right there, so I gotta get that opened up and put it all on. So let's get at her.
You know, something to do, obviously, before you try putting your top end on is the two-stroke, at least. There are certain places that the rings have to sit down in. And I just got both those seated so I can squeeze in tight. Also, make sure your gaskets are on right. I actually put this uh, base gasket on wrong the first time I set it in there. And uh, sorry, there's a little bit of junk right there. But mating surfaces are clean, so now I guess I'm going to go ahead and try to throw the cylinder in. Uh, I'm going to see if I can set up a camera for that, too. So, yeah, <clears throat> see if we can make this proper run tonight. I figured you guys watched me fight that enough. Um, basically, the, I got to find something to compress those rings. Um, normally, small engines, I never need to use a ring compressor. These rings are pretty stout. I might have to. You might have seen me. I peeled one off, put it in there, made sure there was ring end gapped. Uh, looked like there was about enough. So, it should fit. So, uh, we might just time lapse. We might just, we might just call it quits there. Till the thing's in, because there might be some choice words said. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so I finally got the cylinder in. Um, I even put some WD in there, and I made sure everything does what it's supposed to do. So, I put some WD in there to lube it up just so nothing would, uh, you know, try to score the cylinder or anything like that. But everything seems to uh, work like it should, so... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the head on. Now what I use for the head gasket is some of this ultra copper silicone. Um, a lot of people say don't use anything. Now, I'm someone who has had the head planed, has had the top of the cylinder planed, so everything should be perfect. Put the cylinder on, or put the head on, took everything down to spec, still had a little bit of seepage coming out of there. <laughs> Ever since the time I did that, I talked to some guys. They told me Ultra Copper is the way to go with this on these air foolers. Liquids, no idea. Never messed with one. So you'll see me put some, some silicone on there. That's what it is. I don't use that much. And then uh, get the head on, get the intake, or get the carb on. And uh, it ought to be ready to fire, really. Um, I'll probably time lapse. I'll get the fuel tank and everything on, exhaust, all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's try to make this dog bark.
So apparently, my phone quit recording at some point in time, which I'm not mad about because I heard the thing just vibrating up a storm over there, and I was like, golly, that's going to ruin my recording, but I guess it wasn't recording, so probably not. So, you really didn't miss much other than I put an exhaust on, tank on, made sure everything was torqued, hooked the carb up. <clears throat> now let's see if she wants to fire or not. I never checked spark. I never even hooked up the spark plug, actually. So, uh, assuming it's been doing what it does every time, it should run. It should pop right off. I mean, obviously there's no fuel in the car. Well, the carb's probably full by now, but um, you also might be wondering why I kicked with my left foot. I once destroyed my right ankle and hurt my leg pretty good. So when I have to kick a lot of times, I don't use my right leg anymore. I also do not have the choke on, so let's see what happens here. Okay, let's choke it. <laughs> can almost smell exhaust, so something's a happening. Get up the temp, let it get warm. It's probably pretty close right now. It's not too hot, but uh, for the first step of braking, oh, okay, one to shut off. The idle seemed a little bit low, but uh, I think that's gonna be my first break in procedure on it. She's pretty well up to temp, I'd say. Um, I did notice, and I completely forgot about this. This filter does leak a little. I have a new one, I, I just Bought it last year, but I never needed it, so I never put it on. Because so I saw a bunch of buildup here, and I was like, man, that seal right there must be leaking, which is weird, because this entire bottom end was just gone through a year or two ago. I don't remember. So all new seals, all new bearings, everything, and the lower's pretty much brand new. Um, another thing I did notice is there was exhaust coming out here. I completely forgot to put my O-ring in there, which isn't a huge deal right now, but... Uh, this thing is currently on race fuel, and I plan on changing it over to pump gas. So that will be potentially a factor then when it comes to actual tuning. Because it just, to me, it runs extremely hard until like the very, very top end. And that's when I, it just kind of acts like it's getting too much fuel. So the way I originally blew this thing up actually is I went down, I think, one main jet size. And that's where I got myself. That's why I ruined this original, not original, but that's why I ruined my uh, top end or the piston stuff that was on here before this one. So, uh, yeah, she's back. Kind of. 
Uh, I got to finish breaking, obviously. Um, I'll probably run it again tomorrow. And then obviously work me up over the next few days. Get it where it needs to be. Get it front brakes. I think I have the caliper. I just need to put it on. <clears throat> but yeah, that was a very easy start. And it sounds great, in my opinion. If you're not used to air coolers, they sound weird. But if you are, this is what they sound like. And I think mine sounds pretty good right now. So pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I can't complain a bit. It went together for the most part smoothly. Obviously, as you saw, the cylinders gave me some trouble. But now what I get to do is move this guy off to the side so I can get a tractor in here to hopefully finish up a video that I've already been working on because, well, it's getting cold out and where it was, I couldn't really work on it like I needed to. But now you have a hint as to something weird for the next video, which should be that tractor not the Ford. That one will end up here eventually, but it's a different one that I don't think's ever actually been on the channel. I've worked on it many a times in the past, but I don't think it's ever actually been on the channel, other than maybe in some pictures, but or in the background of stuff. But that is going to do it for today. So thanks for watching. I hope this video is not too long. I don't know. I try to time lapse things as quick as I can, just so we're not having. Uh, built up boring time but then there's times like now where I ramble for far too long so oh I'm gonna quit that a rambling and get on out of here so thanks for watching